Hi, welcome to Astro Journey UK. In today's video, I'm going to be pairing up my Radcat 51 telescope with the ASI 2600mm Pro. Um, for those of you that might know, there's uh, an undersampling issue with this particular combination of focal length and the sensor size and the pixel size. So I thought I'd do a bit of an experiment to see what the impact is. So if you want to find out, then keep watching. So here's the setup I'm working with tonight. I've got the ZWO AM5 harmonic drive mount, uh, nice and portable. Uh, so I'm down at my parents at the moment, so I could just shove this in the back of the car without any problem. Round here I've got the ASI Air Pro device. You're not actually meant to put it on here. Uh, they do advise against it, but I think it's gonna be fine because um, if you look down here, you've got enough clearance when the mount is rotating through the sky and everything, so I think we're good there. Um, all of the usual cables around everywhere. And then you've got the Red Cat 51 telescope. You've got the guide scope on the top there. And then I've mounted the ASI 2600mm Pro with the, the electronic filter wheel there as well. I've gone for the same back spacing um, to achieve the right back spacing. Uh, however, I don't think it's actually needed because of the uh, the Petzl lens focusing system that's in the Red Cat. When you move the focus of the entire lens moves backwards and forwards. So apart from getting this bit lined up and therefore using that focusing, um, you shouldn't really need it, but I'll find out when it gets dark as to whether it actually works. So I've got everything uh, all lined up, all pointing to uh, north. Uh, the mount's all nice and level. Uh, just need to wait for it to get dark now. Originally focused everything uh, using the luminance filter and if I kind of go back to the images I then switched over to the hydrogen alpha filter however um, because these uh, filters you have to refocus them uh, because they're not par focal it means that you can use the same focus for each of the filters um, irritatingly I took eight shots of the HA filter before just going back inside to see the family and everything. And yeah, although this is kind of looking really nice, uh, they're out of focus. So I'm gonna have to junk those. Uh, I've refocused everything. If you kind of look at the star, you do detect star size. Uh, you'll be able to see here the stars are like 3.09. However, if I go back to here, so I refocused, uh, took a quick preview shot of about two seconds and you'll see things down to uh, 1.68, 1.69. So uh, the star's looking at a lot sharper. So I've uh, kicked off the plan again, uh, starting with HA and uh, just waiting for that first five minutes sub to come through. There we go, that's looking a lot better. Let's just do detect stars. And yeah, 1.74 is a lot more respectable. When we zoom in, we can actually see some of the detail in the center of the heart nebula. So you've got the heart nebula on the left and uh, the soul nebula on the right. That's all looking really nice. Uh, guiding is, is pretty good. Uh, 0.7 arc seconds, so that's really good. So I can now just leave that for a bit. So I'm going to take uh, 10 subs of uh, HA, then switch over to uh, O03. I think it's going to be a while before the moon comes up enough that it's going to start causing me problems. And then I'll move over to uh, 10 subs of uh, Sulfur 2 as well. Uh, not a huge amount of data, but hopefully enough to get a reasonable colour image um, for tonight.
So on to the uh, the main purpose for this video really. Uh, I just wanted to talk about undersampling, uh, a little bit about oversampling and just the, the matching and pairing up with different cameras and telescope focal length. Undersampling occurs when the number of pixels in an image is, is insufficient to accurately capture the details of the object that you're imaging. So typically astrophotography is, uh, is obviously going to be stars. So this can result in a loss of detail or sharpness of the image, but in particular with stars you can end up with some, some fairly blocky stars. Stars. So as you can see with this particular image that we've got here, um, from the whole screen and the whole view perspective it actually looks um, it looks perfectly fine to be fair. If you zoom in and you kind of zoom into, uh, into the stars you can begin to see the actual stars themselves. There's not enough sort of pixel to star definition in order to be able to see a nice round star. So this star here is quite large but this one down here it's actually only taking up uh, nine pixels and so therefore looks quite blocky and square and doesn't actually look right and that's exactly what they mean by undersampling. So really at the end of the day I think from what I've seen as long as you're not zoomed in so far into an image in reality I don't think it's really going to actually make much of a difference. If you go back to the whole view and the whole field here. You've got a lovely view of the Heart Nebula and the Soul Nebula in HA. You can see all of the detail that you would really want to see in an image the, of this size of this particular field of view. And I wouldn't say that the stars are particularly sort of blocky or look particularly odd in any way, shape or form. So yeah, from that point of view I don't think it's particularly a problem. So if you wanted to uh, see what the effect was with your particular telescope focal length and your particular camera that you're using then you can use a tool like this particular one on astronomy tools i'll put a link into the description uh, nice and easy to use you literally type in your uh, telescope so i'm using a william optics uh, scroll down until i find redcap 51 and it will pre-fill out the focal length uh, we're not using a barlow or reducer here and then you then type in the camera that you're using. So I'm using the ASI 2600mm Pro. Automatically fills out the uh, pixel size. Um, I'm not, yeah, not using binning. You can sort of say, oh, what was the seeing that particular day? Was it good, poor, very poor, etc.? So I'm just going to go with OK seeing. And this already highlights that um, in in the red is a, a bad place to be. Um, from a from an undersampling perspective and the square stars etc but it's it's quite far into that red so it's already providing that that idea that using a a large sensor like the APS-C sensor in the 2600 with that particular pixel size you can see that uh, you're going to end up in that in that red range the the camera that I actually purchased for the red cat itself uh, the 183MC Pro even with that it's kind of just about in the in the green zone it's kind of pushing into the into the yellow zone there but another camera that uh, does get used quite a bit will be something like the uh, the the Canon series of uh, digital SLRs and again you've got um, that's using an APS-C sensor as well uh, the pixel size is a little bit bigger and that bigger pixel size with the lower focal length is is pushing you well into this red range. I, I still think at the end of the day it's it's going to be down to what you're going to be using this particular image for. So if we go back to this uh, this view of uh, the Heart and Soul Nebula I think you could print this out probably in A3 without any major issues in terms of being able to see square square sort of stars and things. So I, I wouldn't Personally, I don't think it's worth worrying too much about that sampling. Uh, it's ironic because I went out and bought a camera which was paired with the the Red Cat, but in reality, I could use the 2600. I could use the 1600. Um, it, it doesn't really make that much material difference. So just kind of zooming in again, just for everybody to see. Finally, yes, you're not getting perfectly round stars here, but when you're going back to the uh, the, the view of the full field, it doesn't really make any difference. So it would be uh, great if I could hear from you what your thoughts are in terms of how much you think undersampling is a particular problem. 
Do you have any uh, any issues or any observations from your own experience? I think it would be really good if you share those in the comments below, uh, just to spark up a bit more of a discussion uh, after this video. So I'm going to leave it at that now. Uh, I would just like to say thank you very much for watching and clear skies.